are there any stories or any memories that necessarily uh, come to mind when you think about either of these recording projects? <laughs> That, you, well, that, that you're allowed to talk about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, one, there's a couple of funny ones, but one I really remember vividly is, is during the recording of the American Brass Banjo. Jerry Schwartz, who was principal trumpet of the Philharmonic at that time, and uh, Rolf, they were sitting, Jerry was here and Rolf was here. They were across from each other like this. And every once in a while, Jerry would make certain comments and things, you know, clean this, do this, and then Rolf would kind of then have his thing and he would say this and this. And then I remember when Rolf and, Jer Rolf and Jerry went to tune, they had a very, very different sounds. Very, you know, um, Jerry Schwartz was very compact, very clear, just, you know, very virtuosic as well. Mm -hmm. Rolf sounded like a great dancer, you know, just so fluid, so alive. And so when they were <laughs> when they were tuning, Jerry played the E flat. He said, "Here, I'll play the first one." And then Rolf played it. And Rolf, you know, I he purposely I could feel it. I mean, we were very young. Rolf purposely tried to envelop his sound. And and after so when they were tuning, <laughs> Jerry goes like this. Rolf goes like this. And Rolf looked at me and went, <laughs> you know. <laughs> with that look like a young person my sound totally enveloped his <laughs> <laughs> that's funny he got him <laughs> and stuff like that because it was a very big age differentiation mm -hmm. in the group mm -hmm. i mean at least by 30 35 years yeah. with mundy and swallow being in their early 50s at that time i was 20 rolf was maybe 22 or 23 and so you know, um, it's a very big difference. But I remember all, we were going out to lunch and I was just so happy going out to lunch and <laughs> being with everyone and yeah. then coming back and just playing. Mm -hmm. And we used to play. I mean, we were when we rehearsed as a group, we used to play all day long, it seemed. We'd have a BSO rehearsal in the morning and then we'd rehearse in the quintet all afternoon or we'd have the BSO concert that would end at 10 30 at night this is not in the recording sessions but just the quintet and we'd go over to dave's apartment which is in back bay and we'd rehearse from 11 to 2. Uh. We, we'd have just you know rehearse all the time so we had that mentality going into this session too that we're just going to be there and play as long as it would take to have it happen and rolf wouldn't stop no matter how tired anyone else was <laughs> do, you, do you recall if having the expanded roster for either of these albums that affect the the time commitment for the recording session in either way um what was there two or three sessions in one day or two i recall two at I, remember, least. I mean we had to do some rehearsal with everybody yeah so it might have gone over two days i don't i don't honestly remember yeah, but um, but you know I, what I remember I mean, uh, about that was that particularly about the first session was that you know when you when you're playing with players that are better than you are and I I always felt that these guys mm -hmm. they would pull me up there was a synergy that happened when you play with players that are so experienced and so competent that they can just walk into a session put on the microphones and play down the first time and sound great you know there was a synergy that i experienced that i will never forget and it was just like everybody was making everybody else sound better you know mm -hmm. i i don't know how else to say it it was there was just this wonderful uh sense that the sum of the parts came to be something greater than the individual parts it, and it was a, a magical uh, mm -hmm. uh, experience to have. I agree. Do you recall the moment when you guys played in that group for the very first time with the, the full expanded brass band? I mean, well, with the full roster that was on, I mean, uh, that probably that feeling happened from the very beginning of yeah. the, the first rehearsal of the first session yeah. you know everybody was of course on you know good behavior and we were trying to make a name for ourselves empire was trying to make a name for, our, for ourselves like that we could run with the big dogs too mm -hmm. and uh it everybody just pulled everybody else up and it, that's there's such energy on that 
album that you hear it, uh, and I experienced it again when I was listening la- over the last few days. That uh, is, you it's it's really palpable. You can you can sense it when you oh, yeah. listen to that music. It's it's yeah. fun. And that's I remember the miking situation. You know, to really help. Fu- you know, remember there was a whole issue with putting the mics in a certain yeah. kind of way at the right height, which yeah. is really important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For and so I remember a lot of that going on. I can't remember the the person's name who was the engineer at the time. I remember what he looked like and everything. Maybe he's listed on the recording. Yeah, Bud Graham and Ray Moore are the two yeah. engineers. Mm-hmm. Bud Graham. I mean, I those names you see on a lot yeah. of albums of Columbia mm-hmm. albums from the seventies. They were very experienced. You you knew you were in hands with people that really knew what they were doing. Yeah, yeah that's and, uh, moving chairs and stands and stuff. So. Mm-hmm. 